Joker, maybe you can help me. <laughs> I just want to move my screen say, uh, quickly. Uh, maybe I should just close that. Um, okay, I will succeed one just now and essentially um, gotta be able to move that. Okay, let me use that. Okay, we, we can all see that and um, Okay, in introducing CEDA, essentially um, we date back to e-legislation, which came into being in 2004, December 2004, CEDA was legislated into being. And um, we were formed via the merging of Nzika Enterprise Promotion Agency, NAMEC, which was a, um, a program that was primarily assisting uh, small and medium manufacturers. Uh, CPPP, which was a program that was looking at community and uh, public and private partnerships doing rural development primarily. Um, then the incubation side via Hodesa and the National Technology Transfer Program and the Quality Insti Institute. So our mandate as CEDA really is the implementation of national government's uh, small business development strategy. Um, one of the um, objectives uh, behind CEDA is the implementation of a national footprint, a delivery network uh, throughout the country. As of 2014, we are an agency of the department of small business development. And this is our national setup, the footprint. We have a national office, which is based in uh, Pretoria. Uh, each province has got a provincial office. Uh, these offices are uh, essentially for coordination uh, and reporting and budgets and, and things like that where most of the work happens is at the branches. Uh, we have 53 of those in the country. Um, we also have um, 72 business incubators, which are not really uh, part of the CEDA brand per se, but these are incubators um, through which CEDA also delivers services to small enterprises. The incubators, I must say, are mostly non-profit uh, companies, which are one, funded or partly funded by CEDA, two, supported by CEDA in terms of capacity building, as well as uh, other infrastructure. Okay, we also have um, co-location points or co-location offices, and this is achieved via uh, agreements with um, different uh, stakeholders and um, different local municipalities. Just touching on what they offer via national office, um, the business incubation, we have a division that is uh, looking at the incubation, the support of incubators, the setup, uh, assisting uh, with the setup and the funding of incubators. We also have technology transfer, um, which also comprises of a uh, grant funding, not only capacity building, but also there's a grant fund of up to 600,000. Up to 150,000, the grant is 100%, but on the other side of that, it becomes 90%. And then the guys can then um, fund the other 10%. Um, quality and standards, this is where we assist small enterprises uh, through implementation of quality systems, um, identifying relevant uh, national and other standards 
uh, assisting the small enterprises to achieve certification to those standards. CPPP is primarily for rural development, as I've said previously. Uh, it's primarily looking at uh, cooperatives, mostly large scale projects, and it looks at various uh, industrial sectors. Also have a specific program called the Manufacturing Support Program. Uh, we also, from the national office, have a learning academy, uh, which has been doing a lot of work uh, so far as internal capacity building is concerned. But uh, being an accredited institution, accredited uh, via the services CETA, the Learning Academy is now opening up and also addressing um, stakeholder uh, capacity development needs. If you step into a CEDAR branch, you are likely to receive um, or have access to services like finance and legal, where you could be assisted as appropriate and assisted so that at the end of the day, where the need has been identified, you could uh, have a business plan assisted to, to get a business plan. Financial management implementation, where the small enterprise, as per the needs of the business, uh, we would assist them perhaps to implement a system which could include um, procuring some software, especially if they have the hardware to run with it, okay, as well as training that goes with the implementation so that the guys are not stuck. We typically um, get the SPs to also to commit to after sales or after even the training to carry on supporting this small enterprise. We also, under finance and legal, also have joint ventures where we assist uh, clients, one, to identify suitable potential partners, assist them to vet them, uh, uh, and up to the point where they draw up um, legal agreements. Uh, with those uh, partners in HR skills development, um, com compliance, perhaps to HR policies, to legislation and training, okay, marketing, right through the spectrum. Uh, a lot of businesses today are getting into e-marketing. They That, that's not me. Is it? Can you guys still pick me up, sound-wise? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Thank you very much. I just saw a little note that says there, yeah, um, I've been muted. Okay. So, yes, in marketing, we do market facilitation, uh, marketing plans, marketing strategies. We assist with uh, research. Um, we would go all the way in terms of also promotional uh, materials. We would do um, also in-store activations or promotions. We would also assist with export development and um, trade exhibitions, uh, inward and outward uh, exhibitions. We would assist with those uh, productivity and technology, especially for your manufacturing um, businesses, process development. And those are essentially um, the various uh, sub areas under productivity and technology to improve um, the, the output in terms of quality, as well as improve the output in terms of quantities. Quality management systems, uh, ISO 9001, 22000, and all the various other um, standards. We would also assist with product testing and product certification. We've assisted um, a number of businesses, some of which were 
um, having uh, their concrete blocks being tested uh, by the Bureau of Standards and as well as having their um, systems implemented by private service providers and then uh, certified by accredited bodies, again, like the Bureau of Standards um, and, and similar organizations. Also, we, we do do um, some networking sessions where we link up the small enterprises with either big business or with other small enterprises. And we, we find that they tend to um, sort of uh, appreciate the, the linkages and new business opportunities uh, that result from those networking sessions. The last one I've left here uh, on purpose, I suppose, are the diagnostic assessments to which we conduct, as it were, that precedes any sort of intervention that would be done at the business. What the diagnostic assessment is about really is about identifying the areas of need in the business. Um, this looks at both how the business is set up internally, as you would uh, identify things like weaknesses, uh, up to the point where you are also looking at um, how it is poised uh, in terms of its ability to respond to external uh, market dynamics. Uh, in other words, you could be looking at also what we call threats. But we, we look at those, uh, the bias is in looking at those two. Uh, the reason being, uh, being a diagnostic, you want to sort of assist the business. So, so that it can ameliorate, you know, the, you know, the, the, the influence of such weaknesses and strengths. But we also look at the positive side of things for a very good reason. For instance, if it's got some uh, key strengths, we, the tendency would then be to really use those um, to propel the business up to sort of make them use those um, to market themselves, you know, to differentiate even at the marketing stage, also at looking at other possibilities, looking at the strengths. Okay, I've just then taken just one there, which is the typical um, intervention or possible interventions, again, under financial, uh, basic bookkeeping. Um, some people uh, didn't keep their records and now they want to apply for a, a, a tax uh, clearance. Uh, we assist them with a once-off financial cleanup. And as I've said before, uh, system, we also have the critical planning exercise, um, which I will just uh, spend another three minutes after this slide on. Um, the, the requirements, and this is, um, true for any client that comes through the requirements. I put it at the bottom, the readiness for change. What does that mean? You will not see us with an instrument these days, but certainly it is a requirement that the client that wants to access services from CEDA has to be ready for change. What do we mean by that? Uh, they need to be ready to engage with whatever change proposals that the business advisor would be coming up. Um, if they feel they're good enough, then they're not good enough to be wanting CEDA assistance. But if they do opportunities for them to sort of improve their business. And as such, we are not saying they must accept what the business advisor is proposing as gospel. No, we are rather saying they should be prepared to engage with the change proposals as uh, coming from the diagnostic assessment. So we would do assessments which would lead to proposals coming out. With the assessments also, we capture critical information 
which we use as baseline. In other words, a few months down the line, a year down the line, we again review uh, the status of the business at that point, and we compare to the baseline information just to check what sort of progress has been done. In terms of readiness for change, uh, small businesses that are ready for change, one of the things they are ready to do is to share information uh, of their business, okay? Uh, what we don't know uh, today, uh, we could know tomorrow. So um, what you're hiding today could be public knowledge as, as, as soon as like tomorrow. So businesses that are ready for change, they will not hide what sort of turnover they are making. They will not hide what areas are troublesome in their business. They will not hide the profitability of their business. We are a public funded agency. And for that reason, we need to keep on reporting to government how we are, one, assisting, that's process side, but also how we are impacting the small enterprise um, sector. In other words, are we really making a difference? Is, is there a rand or two rand or five rand for every rand that the government spends on CEDA? For that reason, we have to be reporting. Uh, we don't naturally uh, put up the company names and all the figures and, and, and so on, but rather we report on the difference we have made, their sales have increased by 500% over a 12 month period, resulting, for example, having successfully implemented a quality management system as was demanded by their customer, and they've now been lending some major orders uh, pursuant to that. Okay, let's just have a quick chat now about the critical planning exercise. This is a little instrument, as I've said, which I would imagine all businesses should really be using. Because it's, it's on the one hand, a planning tool um, where you are looking forward and sort of saying, this is what I plan to achieve. And these are the actions I will be taking in order to achieve this. You could be planning with, for instance, um, some, some known contract up for grabs and you could in your planning be saying, if I get that contract, this is potentially what would happen. Uh, naturally, if I don't get it, things might, let's say, continue as they are. Okay, also I plan to develop, for instance, a new product. And if during the year I successfully complete that development, this is the difference it's going to make in terms of sales, but not only sales. When it gets in as the new product, this little instrument is set up also to say, okay, if it's a product, a, a tangible product, naturally, if your sales go up, your cost of sales naturally will also go up. Uh, you just have to uh, feed in the information that this would be the raw material cost, it would, this would be the selling price, and it works out the rest. So as your sales increase, so would you, the corresponding cost of sales increase. This is a, um, an instrument where you are able to play around. If you're looking at cash, cash management, it's not an easy thing. It's a huge killer for small enterprises. Cash or the lack thereof. So you can work around customer payments. What if I pay my, uh, or rather they pay me, my customers pay me, let's say in 15 days, 30 days. What if I were to extend that to 45 days? Would my sales go up? Most likely, yeah. But what would happen to your cash position? Okay, let's say my customers then go up to 45 days. My suppliers 
Could I then also offset that against them? What if then I sort of offer varied sort of um, delivery terms to my customers? What could I do to reduce my expenses? These are all the sort of what if games the client is able to do with the business advisor, a competent business advisor would be assisting and the client would be sitting next, next to the BA and they will see what is happening. The evaluation of the inputs into this is done by the BA uh, in terms of the inputs coming from the owner. The BA is able to say, okay, let's review, let's see how did you arrive at these projections? Uh, is there a reasonable basis for these projections? Or are we sort of, um, you know, uh, thumb sucking? Okay, so we are also able to do a bit of cash management and we are able to follow and capture all the information over time to see at implementation all this all the the performance against what was projected okay um with the cpe or the critical planning exercise we able um to determine the overall health or viability so viability looking at its profitability its cash flow and um, looking also at things like your break-even sales or your margin of safety, which determines how safe are you operating uh, away from the break-even. In other words, the, the, the less the likelihood of you um, falling through, you know, um, uh, the higher you go up uh, on the margin of safety. It looks at your profitability, uh, liquidity ratios, uh, value of the business. And uh, this one, again, is, it's not applied blindly. Um, value of the business in terms of the CPE is looking only at return on investment method. There's another um, interesting uh, indicator, the sensitivity. Uh, businesses differ in terms of their profit sensitivity. Some businesses would respond to increases in profitability faster than others, and others would respond to um, reduction to expenses faster than others. And others, on the other hand, would also uh, respond to reduction in cost of sales. So you are then able with the assistance of the business advisor to establish what is your business most sensitive to. What that helps to do is to really know where to touch first, because where it's most sensitive, it's, it's more like least effort, maximum return. Okay, you're also able to look at further cash management uh, indicators, your creditors days, debtors days, and your stock turnover days. Okay, which at the end of the day would also indicate if there are borrowing requirements in a period before we even get to that period. That's the critical planning exercise. The last slide I have is on, as we go forward, uh, CEDA at, at this point, CEDA uh, should have said that perhaps right at the beginning, but uh, as you could pick up, it's, it's more non-financial services. So CEDA as the, the 2004 um, Small Business uh, Enablement um, Amendment Bill, CEDA was given a facilitation role, coordination role, um, to see to the setup of the, the network. CEDA has been made up in terms of uh, all the actions, in terms of developing uh, small enterprises. But now a review of CEDA is returned to show that CEDA should actually be playing more of a facilitation role, which is what we are getting ourselves into now. 
okay? Um, we will be uh, capacitating the ecosystem partners. In other words, there are other partners uh, or stakeholders who are doing a very similar, maybe complementary role when it comes to small enterprise development. And there's also the private sector, your BDS providers. These are the other people that CEDA is going to be working with and through in ensuring that small enterprises are developed. Um, we're also looking uh, during that uh, at business advisor, uh, professionalization. We're looking at implementation, in fact, establishment and implementation of incubation and bus business development support uh, standards. Okay. Um, we're also looking at a very important one, district information management systems. That is going to enable us to be able to jointly assist uh, clients, if we may, I may call them that, in, in developing them, we would be um, all working towards the same goal of seeing them being profitable. We would also be aware of who has done what. In other words, the, the current problem of double dipping will be, I think, eliminated via this system. Last thing I want to say is that uh, the, the Department of Small Business Development is uh, embarking on a number of um, informal sector uh, programs. Um, we're starting off with the spazers and general dealers, uh, automotive, uh, whether they are mechanical or body, uh, body, body works, um, clothing and textiles, bakeries and confectionaries, those are the, the various um, products, uh, uh, rather um, industries, uh, informal sector, where the department will be supporting the informal businesses. We're currently more mobilizing uh, to ensure that we recruit because these guys, 95-98% uh, of them don't know about the existence of these uh, programs. But um, as we mobilize, we are getting to recruit them. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Yengeni, for that extensive presentation. Um, I think uh, just one, one question from me before I just take a few questions from the people that are watching, a few questions that are coming in from Facebook. And uh, there are one or two that are coming in from the guys that are joining us here. Um, if, if we were to, um, to dumb it down and to make it very, very simple, I think there are two types of people that are watching this. There are um, service providers, those that want to be CEDA service providers, and those that are uh, CEDA clients or those that want to be CEDA clients. For those that want to be CEDA clients, um, what steps must they take? What must they do? Must they just go into the branch and say, this is the intervention I want? What is the process? And perhaps whilst you are at that, how can, how can we bridge that gap between them their, when they first go into the branch and register as a CEDA client and when they first receive their first intervention? Because I know that there can be quite a, a huge gap in between there. Um, okay, thanks, Mr. Joker. Uh, perhaps starting off with the service providers. Uh, once a year, we make a call uh, where we invite service providers. Okay, some of the service providers would be on our database currently, others would be um, unknown to see them. So what we also do is from time to time, we go through the um, central supplier database and we look at the top group of services um, that we normally have um, implemented at our clients. And we look for clients 
uh, rather for service providers that provide those within the Nelson Mandela Bay and surrounding areas. Uh, service providers, we, we've made it very simple um, to, to get onto our database, uh, but as we are going forward, we have sort of come across some disappointments. So we will be tightening that up. We will be introducing evaluations on an ongoing basis in terms of the quality that's being delivered by service providers. I think also, if one goes back to the district facilitation um, district, uh, district development approach and facilitation model, which would be going for. One of the key things that are going to be happening there is the capacity building, specifically for your private uh, sector service providers. Clients, at this point, due to the, you know, the regulations, it's, it's not easy to just walk into the CEDA uh, office. Traditionally, that's what would happen. You would walk in and you would get registered and you would attend a, um, an information or briefing session and then you would then be sign posted as appropriate. Either you go through to training or you go uh, see a business advisor. So a client now needs to phone through the branch 041 390-8500, that's our office here in Port Elizabeth. And they, they will um, alert you as to when is the next, if you, you are a new client, naturally you go through the front. Existing clients, typically, Mr. Joker would phone Abigail, the business advisor. Abigail, I would like to see you, this and that and that. Uh, Abigail looks at the diary and says, okay, you could come through at this time or that time. Uh, the new client has got to go through a little filtering system where they uh, first, they would go to the briefing session and from there, they could go see a business advisor, get a date to come see a business advisor or um, come through the information officer, have their names uh, perhaps captured so that they could attend training. The, the training I refer to is basic business skills training, which assists because a number of people come through, they want to open businesses, but they don't know where to start. Once they attend that training, it sort of opens them up so that they are able to do basic homework, basic research that would be required before they can start operating their businesses. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Yingen. I think there are one or two questions. There's one from Facebook. Um, I just want to read it to you. Um, Mr. Bayanda, he's asking, I think it's a very important question. He's asking, how can young emerging farmers benefit from CEDA? Is there anything that young emerging farmers can benefit from CEDA? And um, I know that I, I also have a client who is attending this uh, in um, Utenig. And you spoke, you spoke about the technology and um, the technology grant funding, I think you, you alluded to earlier on. Can you maybe speak a little bit more about that and just explain what the process is there, what that is? And then if there are no other questions, I think we can then call it a night. I don't know if you'd, if you'd be able to make this presentation available so that um, those that were able to attend, it can be circulated to them. Um, one or two other questions. Um, Luke is asking for finance and bookkeeping training. Do I just go to the branch and ask? I think you've answered that. And what do I need to get the training. I think you've answered that. Um, I think those are the questions. Uh, there, are, there are just two other questions that I'm going to go for before we close. But if, if, if you can, can you just deal with those questions, Mr. Yengen? I think we're also done with the presentation, so you can close it from your side so that we can see. Hey. You. 
excellent. <clears throat> okay, thanks very much. Um, the, the first question, the young emerging farmers. Um, on our side, uh, the, there are two aspects in terms of the needs of the farmers. The, the one aspect is um, the, the technical skills, okay? Um, young farmers, do they have the technical skills? The beauty is in that uh, when we do the diagnostic assessment, we are able to establish what are the facts, what's the status? Do they have the necessary skills? Most of them, when they start, they are in possession of those technical skills. The other side is the business skills. Now, this is mostly what has been established to be a problem area, the business side of things. We, we have um, access, we, we have business advisors that would be working with these farmers. Uh, we have an example of a, a, a former client was now taken up by the provincial government. Um, she and her other partners, sisters and, and all that, they were part of uh, these young emerging farmers, okay? One of our business advisors took them through a developmental path. They first ticked the box around technical, took them through and then tipped the box around the basic business skills, whatever skills that are required, including systems in the business. When they are emerging, typically there's a, some deficit, either business skills or the technical skills, or even up to the third point on the financial side. Uh, once I talk about business skills, that would include their ability to also read the market and to respond to the market's needs. Uh, I would like to leave that one there for now. Uh, the, the one on the technology transfer. Um, technology transfer, yes, there is a grant, but the, the basis for that program is that there is transfer of skills, transfer of knowledge, and there are specific sectors that are excluded in that I know services, for instance, as a sector is excluded in, uh, by, uh, in the TTF uh, program. So technology transfer, that one, there's a grant of up to 600,000, as I've said before, from 151,000 up to 600, the grant is 90% and the entrepreneur or the small enterprise would have to come up with a 10% up to 150, 100%. So it looks at um, assisting in the acquiring of um, instruments, uh, equipment, uh, machinery, and um, mostly in um, manufacturing, and other related uh, industries. The, the, the gentleman that was talking about um, finance, bookkeeping, training, some people uh, have got businesses, all right? But um, for instance, the, the gentleman might be, let's say a bookkeeper, and yet he missed a few things uh, here and we assist uh, with what we would then call technical training around the technical aspects of the business, around technical aspects of their core services, the services which they deliver. Yes. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, sir. Um, because of time, I think that is where we can end off for tonight. Uh, so that we can release you to spend the night with your family. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we, we are so grateful. Um, I think the purpose for this for me was just so that people that don't have this kind of information can access it. 
And um, I, there are people on this platform that just started their businesses. They don't know anything about CEDA. And I think we have achieved that. So I don't know if you would make that presentation available so that we can circulate it if that's possible. And yep. if you can, there's someone who was asking here who just joined late, uh, or Mr. Sposet was asking if uh, he has any other questions because he joined us late, who can he speak to? I know you gave the number there, but if there's a, an email address, maybe I can send it to him now. Um, but from my side, thank you so much. I will be dropping off a token of my appreciation at your office. It's a copy of my book. I'll come and drop it off just to say thank you for your time uh, tomorrow morning. And yeah, I think the other questions, um, colleagues, all of those of you who are joining us, you can then take your other questions to the CEDA branch. But this was just for us as uh, small business owners to get some clarity. And I think we have covered that. So thank you so much for all of you who are joining us via Facebook. And thank you to the uh, CEDA district manager, uh, Mr. Angile. Uh, any last words from you, sir? Um, we have just gone through a very, very rough um, sort of period, uh, I think in the history of the whole world. Mm. Um, it, it has changed the way business um, is, is being done in a big way. Some of the things that we used to do, um, we're never going to go back there. We have come across what they call a new normal. So the, the way we've been doing research, certainly uh, we need to review. Anyone who wants to start business now, really they need to get the assistance so that they don't have to fall over uh, pitfalls of yesteryears. So um, it's, it's going to not to be a very sort of uh, soft ride, it's going to be a rough ride as the economy of the country is in a very bad shape, but small enterprises are the ones that will be the engine that gets the economy out of the square mire. So certainly we need all the entrepreneurs. Let them come through, we are there at CEDA, and we are going to support them. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, colleagues, for joining. Um, what email address uh, can you leave us with for people who want to ask further questions? I've got people who are asking for an email address on our Facebook and on, uh, on the chat session here. Is there any person? There is an information officer at our office. Her name is Yolanda. Um, there's also a front person there as well. Her name is Zandi. Okay. And fortunately, she's on. Uh, I'm going to give both Zandi and Yolanda's email addresses. Zandi's uh, email address is Z-S-I-X-A-K-A. -A. Z-S-I-X-A-K-A. -A. Zandi Sklaga, Z-A, Z-A-N-D-I, that's her name. Email address is z s i x a k a at seda s e d a dot o r g dot z a. My email address a yengeni at seda dot org dot z a. The information officer's email address is y utalele c u t a l e l e. Y C U T A L E L E at cedar.org.za. Those email addresses, you would get lots of information. Data, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate the work that you are doing. And um, I don't know if you'd be able, maybe during the day sometime, to email me the, the, the presentation so I can circulate it. But uh, thank you, thank you so much for your time. I'll do it in the next few minutes. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Okay, cheers.